And that actually leads nicely into my third concern, uh, which is when Hiccup takes his helmet off. Um, there's a little bit of animation that he kind of like, like, fixes his hair. And this is very amateurish animation. And I, I do not mean any kind of disrespect for that. I, I, by that. I realize how difficult it is to do 3D animation. I know from experience how hard it is to do. There's this misconception that the computer automatically makes it easy or, or does the work for you, and that is not true. If anything, I, I think it's harder in, in 3D animation. So I have nothing, nothing but respect for people who can do really good 3D animation. I have nothing but respect for people who can do average 3D animation. But this is, this is not good 3D animation. I mean, this, what, what is this? This, when you, when you fix your hair, you push your fingers into your hair. And even that is difficult to do in 3D animation because hair needs to be simulated. It's, it's not, um, it's not an object that you can, uh, that you can, uh, uh, um, interact with. Um, and even that is difficult. You know, people may not realize this, but in 3D animation, um, things don't naturally come in contact. Like if a hand touches a face, the fingers don't automatically deform around it nicely. The hand actually just like goes right through the mesh. So it's very hard to even get objects to look like they're convincingly interacting with each other in 3D space. And it's even harder for something like hair, because hair has to be simulated. Um, but the thing is, it's hard, but it's not impossible and they've done it, and they did it in the first movie, twice, at, at least twice. You know, the first How to Train Your Dragon movie had some of the best animation I've ever seen from DreamWorks. Um, this, it looked very believable, very realistic. These looked like real human behaviors, you know, these didn't look like puppets. Um, a couple moments that stand out in particular to me are the, the moment where Hiccup frees Toothless, and um, then he, he realizes that the dragon is not going to eat him, and his legs just sort of turn to jelly and, and give way under him. <laughs> that was a great fall, but beyond that, it's, it's very hard to make limbs look loose and free in 3D animation. You know, it's, it's easier to get you know, tight, stiff movements with the computer, um, but it's very hard to make limbs look... Um, you know, like, soft and, and loose. So that, that was very good, um, beautifully executed animation. The other one, the other really good standout moment was when, um, Stoic essentially disowns his son, and he steps out of the Great Hall. Then, then, then they brought this up in the commentary on the DVD. Um, he, he steps out of the Great Hall, and just the weight of what has happened is, is too much for him to handle for a moment, and he kind of sways on his feet as if he's lost his balance. And then he immediately, you know, steals his resolve and, and goes off and, and is stoic again. That is excellent animation. Not only does it look good, but it feels real. It feels like a believable human behavior. Uh, but, but this, you know, this... What it, you, know, you know what this is like? Uh, this is like what a student would do if they didn't have the time or the resources to simulate the hair and all they had to work with was like that stiff geometry and they just had to approximate where the hair is. So between the flat face and the less than stellar animation, I am concerned, especially after the huge financial hit that DreamWorks had to take from Rise of the Guardians, which was not a bad movie. It, you know, it wasn't the best thing they've ever done, but it didn't suck. And that movie cost them millions and resulted in hundreds of layoffs for the company. So knowing that and then seeing this trailer and, and seeing it not look as good as the original, do, do you see where I'm concerned? Um, now, if the story is good, I will cease complaining about the animation because a, a really really good story can make up for a lot of bad animation. On the flip side of that, you can have the prettiest pictures in the world, and if there's not a lot of real substance behind them, it's easy to bore an audience very quickly. 
So I am going to reserve any more judgment until I actually go to see the movie. And I, I will definitely be going to see this movie in 3D. You know, th this isn't even a question. For a while, you know, it was like, oh, you know, 3D, 2D, it doesn't really matter. But this, this is one movie that I have to go see in 3D. Because the first How to Train Your Dragon movie is still the best use of 3D I I've ever seen in a movie. Um, so, the, yeah, I know, I know this is going to be a good experience. I'll probably uh, take my dad along, too, because he loves uh, 3D movies. And he never got to see the first How to Train Your Dragon in theaters. I know, right? So, yeah, let's let, let's hope for the best, because you know DreamWorks really needs a win at this point. They really do. I love DreamWorks, and I I do not want to see them go under, but but they need some help at this point. They need a win, and I I don't think Turbo is gonna be it. You know, Turbo Turbo could be very good, but I don't think it's going to be the money maker that. DreamWorks really needs at this point. It does not have the expectations writing on it that the How to Train Your Dragon sequel does. And so hopefully the, the so hopefully How to Train Your Dragon two will be the 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 big thing they need to really get back on track. And, and it, yeah, I'm trying to temper my expectations, but I do have hopes. You know, it seems like they know what they're doing. It seems like they have a plan. It seems like they have a, a, an ultimate story in mind, which is good. It's very good. And they don't call me eternally optimistic for nothing. So, those are my thoughts. Um, please tell me your thoughts. Are you excited? Are you concerned? Uh, that is one thing the trailer, the teaser did very well. It, it did get me excited to go see this next movie. So, please, you know, let me know what you think. Um, as always, I'm eternally optimistic and I will catch you guys next time. How to Train Your Dragon. Of course I do. I'm, we I'm wearing the t-shirt that I bought at the How to Train Your Dragon live arena show that I went to last year as a fully grown adult. But hey, I enjoyed it. My mom enjoyed it. The two middle-aged people sitting next to me thoroughly enjoyed it. And yeah, yeah, I bought the, um, I bought the t-shirt. I bought the production book. And... And I also bought this adorable Toothless plushie because how can you not? How can you not love this guy? I mean, he's so he's so precious, right? So I had to get this guy. And the funny thing was, you know, we got to our seats and I, I pulled him out. You know, I was playing around with his wings and I set him on my lap. Of course, of course I did so he could watch the show with me. Um, and the two adults sitting to my right looked at it and went... Where did you get that? So, so I told them. You know, I, I told them where I, where I found it. Sure enough, next thing I know, they're leaving. And like 15 minutes later, they come back. And each of them has their very own toothless plushie. That, my friends, is how awesome this movie is.